Hi, my name is Bryant. I'm a reptile keeper here at Josh's Frogs. Um, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about morning geckos, also known as the smooth-scaled gecko. Um, and they are called morning geckos because of the noise that they make. So they make like a little chirping or um, barky noise uh, that's very soft, but when they're all together, it's kind of like makes a chorus. Um, and as you'll learn later on in this video, these guys are all female. So the, uh, the idea is that they are mourning the loss of their uh, males and their population. They are found widespread in coastal tropical regions of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Um, so North, Central, South America, as well as Australia and across many of the Pacific Islands. With a range that big, these guys have a ton of locales. Um, so each of those locales kind of has like a little bit of a different variation on their coloration and pattern. So here at Josh's, we have three different kinds of morning geckos. We have the standard morning geckos, which are a black and tan kind of small gecko. Um, the yellow-bellied morning geckos, which are a locality thought to be originally from Fiji. They're distinguishable from the others by their yellow belly, uh, as the name would uh, have you believe. We also have Hawaiian morning geckos, which are a uh, morning gecko that has black spots near the shoulder armpit region. Um, and then we have a higher expression of our Hawaiian morning geckos, which have black spots all the way down the back. So the size of morning geckos. At um, full size, adults are about four inches long. Uh, however, new hatchlings are less than an inch long. So there's a pretty big growing period. Um, and when we ship them out, we wait until they're about a month old. So they're nice and well started. Um, and they're about an inch and a half. Morning geckos can live up to 10 years in captivity. Uh, there have been some reports of up to 15 years, but that's more rare. All morning geckos that we sell here at Josh's Frogs are about a month old when we send them out just to make sure that they're nice and growing and healthy up until that point. So as far as tank parameters for morning geckos, uh, enclosure size, you can have as small as a five gallon tank, although that's a minimum for one gecko. Um, but if you have multiple geckos, we recommend something like a 10 gallon or a 12, 12, 12, like this uh, exoterra here. Um, it's always better to go bigger, um, especially with morning geckos, if you're not removing the babies uh, as they occur, um, you will get more and more in the tank to the point that it'll get overcrowded. Morning geckos at all life stages are escape artists. Uh, they are super fast um, and obviously as geckos do, they climb all <laughs> horizontal and vertical surfaces. Uh, so here at Josh's, we silicone the tops of our tanks as well as add um, in pond foam into the grills of all of our tanks uh, in order to prevent escapees. For substrate, we've had success using Coco Select, which is uh, cocoa fiber mixed with peat moss and orchid bark. Um, we've also had success using our uh, Josh's Frogs bio bedding. Um, because they are arboreal geckos, uh, typically the substrate is basically, they don't spend a whole lot of time in the ground. The substrate is mostly for uh, humidity in the enclosure um, and for supplying food and habitat to your cleanup crews, so isopods, springtails, the like, as well as for plants if you have it live planted. For temperatures of enclosures, uh, morning geckos ideal temperature is between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that said, uh, morning geckos typically can thrive at room temperatures unless you live in a very cold region, in which case you might need a low wattage uh, heating bowl or basking bulb on the top of the enclosure. For humidity of morning, for morning gecko enclosures, these are tropical reptiles, so they require at least 50% humidity. Um, they can thrive up to 90% provided that they have a dry area to retreat to. Um, but again, ideal, ideal range for them is 60 to 80% humidity. So for feeding morning geckos, juveniles will typically eat um, all kinds of fruit flies that we sell here, some Melanogaster and Hydei fruit flies, uh, pinhead crickets, and up to eighth inch crickets. Um, adult morning geckos will eat quarter inch crickets and any other kind of feeder bugs that are about the same size. Um, and at all life stages, morning geckos will eat a uh, crested gecko diet. A crested gecko diet can be used as a complete nutrition uh, for these guys, but at, here at Josh's, we, we alternate um, using crested gecko diet and other feeding insects. Uh, all of your feeders should be gut loaded and supplemented with uh, vitamins and calcium. The sexing of morning geckos is super easy. They are all female. Um, males can be produced, but they're very rare um, and are sterile. Uh, I, in my time working here and dealing with hundreds and hundreds of morning geckos, have not ever seen a male. Uh, but they have been reported in the literature. These are a parthenogenic species, which means that because there are no males, uh, all of the babies are little clones of their moms. 
Um, there is some genetic recombination that happens, so they're not all exactly, exactly the same, which is important evolutionary, evolutionarily for adaptation. Um, but again, uh, they don't have uh, any males, and so all the babies are genetically related to their parents identically. Um, for breeding these guys, it's about as easy as sexing them. Uh, they don't require any specific uh, seasonality or anything. You just, with good husbandry uh, and upkeep, they will be laying eggs. Um, so they lay uh, adhesive eggs um, in the enclosure. Um, so what we do is use these little green hatch uh, lay tubes so that uh, when, when they lay their eggs, they're gonna lay it on some surface. Uh, these can be removed and put in an incubator or on top of vermiculite or whatever hatching medium you're using. Um, but if they lay on something like cork, it's a little harder to do. Um, they, they do stick though, and it's, and it's hard to remove them without breaking the egg. So you wanna have uh, modular parts that you can remove with the eggs on them as much as possible. So morning geckos reach sexual maturity at eight to 10 months. Um, and throughout uh, their adult life, they'll be laying clutches of two eggs every four to six weeks. Morning geckos are best kept in pairs or groups for breeding. Um, they actually do something called pseudocopulation, which is not, uh, not like producing offspring as a mated pair, like most, um, most species that are not parthenogenic, but they do um, stimulate each other to produce eggs more rapidly. Um, this involves a little bit of biting, usually nothing that results in a permanent harm to the animal, um, and uh, yeah, results in two gravid geckos, so pairs or groups. When kept in groups, morning geckos can be much more vocal um, with each other, so you get like a chorus of the little chirps, which is pretty cute. Um, they also uh, just have a lot of visual displays that they do to each other, such as wagging their tails around or arching their backs. These animals also form social hierarchies within their enclosure. Um, so in a new setup, uh, geckos will kind of, you'll see a little bit more aggression for a couple weeks while they're kind of sorting themselves out. But like I said, those bites are generally not super harmful to the animals. Um, if you do see uh, continued aggression after a couple weeks, it's best to separate out an animal uh, just in case. Um, it might be a bullied or whatever. And also when uh, babies hatch out, the adults can eat the offspring or um, make them lose their tails. So it's best to remove them temporarily and let them grow up on their own and reintroduce them once they're of an appropriate size. So one of our favorite aspects about uh, morning geckos here at Josh's Frogs is their ability to cohabitate with dart frogs. Um, so they are able to cohabitate for a couple of reasons. Um, one of which is that the times that these animals are active uh, is completely different. So uh, dart frogs are diurnal, which means they're active during the day. Uh, morning geckos are nocturnal, which means they're active at night. Um, in addition, uh, morning geckos are arboreal, which means that they like to hang out on the glass and on the plants. Um, whereas dart frogs are terrestrial and hang out on the ground. Generally, dart frogs and morning geckos are uh, not big enough to eat each other, um, and dart frogs in particular are microphages, which means that they are specialized for eating small things. So like dart, uh, morning geckos aren't really on their radar, and a morning gecko is never gonna be big enough that he can eat a dart frog. In addition to that, they all eat the same diet, so you can just put in enough food for everybody and uh, they'll all be happy. Uh, for more information about morning geckos, you can feel free to check us out at joshesfrogs.com. We also have a blog where we have a lot of interesting animal husbandry information. Um, we have social media accounts like Instagram, Twitter, etc. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>